like to start the awesome cast with your awesome thing of the week. And of course, uh, our friends here uh, have brains over bullets. Uh, uh, what what is this uh, concept, guys? Uh, Mike, so after the after the shootings in Newtown uh, last year, you know, as technologists, that really that really affected us. And and with the pro and anti gun forces kind of in a stalemate over this. We thought, is there anything here as technologists that we could do that might, you know, be some kind of interim solution or any, any solution at all that, you know, could help the situation uh, rather than this, this stalemate that it's into where, you know, both sides battle back and forth, and, but nothing ever changes. So, you know, kids keep getting shot in school. So we had this idea about could we build a robot that basically could intercept a shooter, you know, once he had entered the building and do something about it until the police arrived. Um, so, you know, we've started kind of a, a crowdsource funding site to see if we can't get some, uh, to get some money to build the, at least the first prototype, which is actually sitting right here behind us. Uh, so of course we call him Bob for short. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's basically the genesis of where the project came from. Excellent. Uh, and, and, and what, uh, tell, tell, give me a little bit of like, how does this thing work? Like, what, what, so when, when, when an incident happens, like, so this, this robot will actually go out and, and kind of respond in a way? Right. So, so, you know, basically what we do here is we build mobile robots. So, you know, we, we're, we're starting from, a, you know, from, from technology that we know. And our idea is at least the first cut at it is if you can imagine there's, in all these schools, there's a security guard watching a bank full of monitors. Uh, if he's watching these monitors and suddenly sees an intruder, you know, shoot through a glass window and enter the building, you know, if, if the system is set up in a way where he could take the mouse and basically click on that guy and said, that guy there is the bad guy, then the robot, you know, can have that information relayed to him and go to that position, at least in our idea is to distract this guy, interfere with him, slow him down, you know, for three or four minutes until the authorities can arrive. Mm. So that's basically the, the kind of the, the idea behind behind the robot. Not... Not that he's going to shoot the guy or tie him up in nets, but basically distract him with a number of these devices we put on the robot to keep him focused and occupied until the police can arrive. Okay, okay. I, if nothing else, I feel like like the fact that a robot is coming at him will be will be a good start for distracting him, right? Right, right. Yeah. That's the that's one of the things that happened is once those guys reach the perimeter, you know, they're king for four to five minutes until you know somebody with more force arrives. Mm -hmm. And we thought if we can fill that that empty gap until somebody comes that has more weapons or the ability to solve the situation, then you know maybe we keep kids from getting shot or or, or less kids from getting shot. Okay, okay, it, it's a it's a really cool concept. So so um, you have a prototype. Um, like what what have you done uh, so far? Like with the prototype, the kind of like as your kind of proof of concept here. So so the prototype, the original prototype, right now has has four devices on it. It has a ping pong ball shooter that everybody laughs at until they have ping pong balls shot at them at 200 miles an hour. Uh, it has a fire extinguisher that that uh, dispenses baking soda. It has uh, two fire alarms uh, hooked to it, and uh, it has a bunch of flashing strobe lights. So basically, you know, we want to try to impair their vision, their their sound, and their and their uh, you know their tactile function. But just basically, you know, fire extinguisher foam, and then ping pong balls, and then this thing, you know, going doo -doo 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 -doo, just everything just to keep somebody from from focusing on any one thing other than this robot. Okay. And of course, there's just the size of itself. It weighs about 200 pounds. It's six foot tall. It's just the physical presence is going to be a deterrent. So just anything to slow them down, distract them uh, until the police can get there. So, so this is, uh, and, and this is remote controlled, like you say, the security guard will actually be controlling this thing? Right, right. And, and we started out with that because the initial pushback we got from everybody is, you know, because all robots, because of Hollywood, are, are inherently bad, right? Nobody wants to hear that there's an autonomous robot protecting their kids. So... The first pass at this, you know, we think we need to have, a, you know, basically a wizard behind the scenes controlling it. But ultimately, you know, as in all robotic systems, you know, they're going to become autonomous where they can think for themselves. So once the bad guy is identified, you know, it could have algorithms on board that basically are going to keep him occupied until help comes. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of challenges have you guys seen so far trying to develop this thing? Now, you guys, you say you, you build, like, this isn't the only robot that you guys work on, right? Yeah, we build robots for a living, you know. So this is just this has just been built from bits and pieces of what we have here at the shop. Um, so the the number, you know, of course, as soon as you start talking about it, people come up with all the reasons it won't work. So you know, one of them is, well, somebody, the guy's just going to shoot holes in your robot. And our response to that is, great, that he's not shooting holes in kids. Yeah. Uh, 
there's the multiple floor buildings, you know, and that's going to require multiple robots. Uh, um, you know, if, if the rope, but mostly if the rope, the guy's got to enter the floor on the bottom floor. So if the, if the robot intercepts him there, if he decides to move up the floor too, then then uh, you're going to have to have a robot, you know, positioned on floor two, you know, to intercept him when he clears the steps. Mm -hmm. um, there's a thing that, um, you know, once the guy's in the building, you know, how are you, how are you actually going to identify him as the bad guy? You know, that could be a judgment call. Uh, but the, the one thing that we did want to do is make sure there was no lethal or harmful deterrence on the robot. So we've always said it, if it goes if it goes berserk, the worst thing you're going to have is a is a grand mess to clean up. But you know you're not going to have anybody injured from it. It's okay. So 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 in mind, this is a disposable thing in, in case of, well, you know, the 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 when a horrible incident happens, which is you know I think fine as far as that goes. Better than people, like you said. So <laughs> it's, it's it's like the third round you know, the three laws of robotics, this thing's going to basically give its life to protect you. Yeah, yeah. And, and even though we're talking about the disposability is, is, is not important to us, but it will be hardened. It will be hard to make him, dis, dis, to dispose of Bob will not be an easy feat. So we understand Bob will be under duress and, and great threat himself. So he'll be hardened and he'll be um, impervious to a lot of the projectiles that the shooter will be using. So um, Bob's going to be pretty re resilient in himself. So that, that's one of that's a good point, uh, Mike. Because a lot of people come up to me and say, "Well, I'm just going to shoot holes in your robot." And I said, "I've thought about this for like two years. Do you really think that I haven't thought that somebody's going to try to shoot bullet holes in it, and that I wouldn't do something to keep that from happening?" Mm -hmm. uh, I'm always amazed by that by that question. But uh, yeah, we're going to make sure that he can at least take some damage before uh, you know he goes to quit. Uh, so, so it looks like it sounds like you're 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 mainly focused on schools, of course, uh, and you know that horrible situ those horrible situations. But are are there other applications uh, aside from that target that you think this thing can be adapted for? A absolutely, you know, malls, any any public spaces, malls, uh, prisons. In fact, we you know we've had somebody already mention about that. You know, this would be a great thing for like a prison riot. Um, and, and, and the other question we've asked is, you know, if it was in a situation like a prison riot, it, it could be something more powerful than, you know, ping pong balls and, and uh, fire stickers. Excellent. Now, you do have uh, uh, an Indiegogo campaign going on here. Um, right. For uh, Just look up Brains Over Bullets over there, Indiegogo. Of course, everything's at brainsoverbullets.com. Uh, so uh, how has uh, uh, you know, how, the reception been? I know you have had, uh, you were mentioned in an article, uh, I believe that was the Beaver County Times, if I'm not mistaken, or? Right, right. Mm. Yeah, we've had, we've actually had, uh, we've had the two state senators representatives in. Uh, somebody from Harrisburg called us last week doing a piece on it. But it's been it's been slow, and we were warned not to run a not to run a campaign over the holidays, and I think that may have bit us in the butt a little bit, uh, in the sense that everybody's kind of busy and not following typically their social media as well as they typically do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, it's not going to slow us down. We already have enough money that we can uh, do the things, the upgrades we want to, to get the first to the first plateau of uh, of um, the working model. So. Yeah, it's not going. Whether or not we hit the number or not, it's not going to us. We're going to keep going. Yeah, and I found that too because I, I ran a uh, unsuccessful Kickstarter a couple years ago, and, and I find that even if you're not, you don't hit that limit or anywhere near it or anything, you do at least like you get no, the notice. And it sounds right. like you, you, yeah. know, you got some government, you got some newspaper notice, so uh, that can definitely help you, uh, I think, to the next step. So, so it's definitely just because just because a, a Kickstarter doesn't work out doesn't mean that's the end of the project. Uh, definitely. That's right. Yep. So. Um, uh, so, I mean, you know, other than the holidays, uh, is there anything, any advice you can give other people kind of looking to get a project? Of course, you guys, you guys are making something uh, with this versus other people trying to do a podcast or, you know, a movie or something like that. Um, you, you know, what, what are uh, kind of the biggest hurdles that you're finding uh, in trying to get this thing out there? It's, it's, it's funny because, because of the social media, even though you can get the word out, there's a million other people also trying to get their words out. So it's, it's hard to get above the din. You know, I feel like I'm in the back of the room, jumping up and down, waving my hands back and forth. Uh, and as technologists, you know, we're, we're geeky robotic guys. We don't have that, that media savvy that we need. And I think Dean would agree. We, we needed that. We needed to have like the campaign in place before we pushed the button. And uh, I think we pushed the button before we had, you know, we should have had all the people we wanted to contact lined up. So when it went out, it went out in a giant press release. Uh, and I feel like we've been behind the eight ball the whole time. 
Awesome, awesome. Um, awesome. Uh, so uh, if anybody wants to check, tell us all the places where we can find out uh, more about uh, uh, you know, uh, what you guys are doing. Yeah, the Brains Over Bullets site, and then of course, you know, our own company, Roprodesign.com. You know, that's the that's the parent company that's doing this work. Uh, but but the Brains Over Bullets site is the best place to go if you're looking for information. What real quick? Because I'm looking, I actually popped over to your your other site, and I'm seeing this kind of slideshow of some of the stuff. Did I just see a lawnmower robot of some sort? Oh uh, yeah, we if, if you can drive it, we can turn it into a robot. That's awesome. So you guys are doing like Roomba for my yard because I could really use that. I'm really, I'm really yeah. bad at getting my yard taken care of. The, the bad thing about lawnmower robots in the United States is what we refer to as the tethered dog problem. Oh. Uh, so you can imagine robotic lawnmower, dog tethered in the yard, something goes wrong, lawsuits, publicity, bad publicity. Bad dog. <laughs> What's the, okay, let's have some fun. What, what is the craziest thing you guys have put together? The craziest thing we've put together, holy cow. There's a lot of them, but I'm going to say one of the ones that I thought was pretty interesting and also pretty crazy was the FTX, which is a giant, um, looks like a big bulldozer, but instead of having a bulldozer lift in the front, it has a big, what they call a tool that actually spins at 3,000 RPM and takes trees and actually wove them down the toothpicks. It's a pretty nice machine, and we, we did that, um, was that last year or year four? Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. We, did a, we did an explosive pig collar for, uh, for tracking pigs feral pigs in Pennsylvania, and it uses like a technology that NASA uses where you use an exploding bolt. So we got these GPS collars that are on these pigs, and uh, when it's time for them to come off, the last thing that the battery does is it sends this charge to an electric bullet, and it explodes these collars off the pigs, and the collars just fall down, and the pigs are uninjured. Okay, 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 thank you, thank you. I was like, <laughs> thank you for clarifying. <laughs> so I, think, I think we almost had a PETA problem there. Um, <laughs> Everybody's I, thinking, yeah, there's all these decapitated pigs. One <laughs> <of them>. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously interpreted and visualized that completely wrong. Uh, I think I found a picture of the this uh, this, this uh, toothpick-making machine. Oh, my God, that's, that's robotic. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. That's a scary machine. It's a large machine. It's very powerful. Yeah. It's really impressive to see that thing under under um, under control it was just amazing wow so and that's also remote controlled yeah that one was remote controlled from uh it was they were clearing our artillery shells off a large artillery range and they needed a standoff distance of about i think it was two miles so the guy's driving that from a remote location Jeez. picking up artillery shells awesome excellent so hey you guys want to stick around